You've been on the road long enough the last few days. <laughs> well, thank God that you're back. I want you to remember uh, a lady that I work with. Um, <coughs> she's really young, got little kids. And um, I was just talking to her the other day. And, and uh, we were just talking and, uh, about her work schedule and stuff like that. And she says, well, she says, uh, I won't be here much longer. I'm going off work starting Monday. And um, I thought maybe she's going to school or something like that. And I said to her, I said, so how long are you going to be off? And she goes, I don't know. But she goes, last week the doctor diagnosed me with breast cancer. And like I said, uh, I uh, we go to that cancer center there on Telegraph for a fair amount. And um, we recently had a brother and a sister in there. Uh, the sister was 19, the brother was 17. They were both being treated with chemo and radiation for cancer. And it looked like that they were, had been sick a day. But she's young and she's got little kids and she is just scared to death. Um, I, uh, well, like I said, her name is Lee. And I want you to really remember her today. And I tell them, Brother Cletus, when, I, when people tell me that, I'm like, everywhere I go, the people that believe in the power of prayer and that God's still in the healing business, I always tell them, I'm going to remember, you know, for everybody to remember you in prayer. Um, and God knows all about it. He knows the beginning of it, knows the middle, and knows the end. But um, um, she's worried about her kids, and I don't blame her for being there. She's a single mom. and um, But like I said, just remember her today. 1.30 Long years ago
brother was right there. two weeks, he passed away. That evening, my car pulled up on me, and it was three weeks in the shop. Boy, was I glad to get home. <laughs> it's good to see everybody in this year today. Sometimes things don't go exactly like we'd like them to. We're in the 21st chapter of Exodus. There's a couple of things that I'd like to start out with before we read them. Now, the law God gave Moses is not the grace plan you and I live under. Many of the issues of the law were said to be sin is still sin. But they didn't have the grace that we got. Now, the law was only intended to be temporary. I believe the grace plan operates from the cross to the return of the Lord. And then I believe after that's the judgment myself. Now, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, it says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Yeah. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. For you all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you that have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, but you're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ and then Abraham seed and heirs according to the promise. That's the identity of the Christian people. That's an identity that died. I don't know what percentage, but a great man of Baptists, Pentecostals, Methodists have given our identity away. They say it belongs to the Jew who don't believe in God. But we are the children of Abraham by faith. And those that are not the children of Abraham of faith are not counted as his children of God. In the eighth chapter of St. John, the Jews told Jesus, we have Abraham to our father. Then Jesus says to them, if Abraham was your father, then you would believe me. But we're told today that that's not the way it is. But now this is what the Bible said. In the 21st chapter of the book of Exodus, we get into their lesson, God begins to give them laws. He began to understand this law is his teacher. It's a schoolmaster. To train them, they need Christ. He begins to show them that sin has consequences. Now, sin still has a consequence at the judgment. Between now and then, many of you has hope of the grace of God that we might repent of such actions if we found ourselves making a mistake or doing wrong. Now, I do not believe that the grace justifies me and you in going out here and knowingly committing sin. When we do that, we've got to repent. Uh, in the 12th verse of the 21st chapter of the Exodus, he that smiles a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. Now, if you murder somebody, the penalty was death. The penalty for a murderer is still death in the lake of fire. But between now and the end of life, the hopes is that by the grace of God, those that are felt guilty would repent and receive forgiveness. God loves so, man so much that he sent Jesus to fix it so that we could go to heaven. Now it said, and if a man lay not in wait, but God delivers him to his hands, then I'll appoint thee a place whether he shall flee. Now, 
there was a situation of accidental death. And there were cities of refuge you could go to if a situation. Now, to me, I can read about the law and I say, ooh, that's hard. That's hard. It's missing the grace of God that we you have in Jesus Christ. The law said you've done this, you're punished. That's it. Forget it, brother. You, 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 that's it. But with God's grace, it says, please don't do this. This is what waits on you if you, if you don't do this. Please repent. But still, the second death waits them. They don't have their sins on the road. Now then, but if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with God, thou shalt take him from that altar that he may die. Now, it was, it was a serious thing to violate the law. You paid a penalty right away. See, God is taking the law. Now he's saying, look here. I want you to understand. When you do wrong, there's consequences to what you've done wrong. You, you, you got to pay the price. And he that spies his father or his mother shall be put to death. Wow. He that smacks his father, his mother, and hits him, shall be put to death. Now, Heather and Steve just got some grown kids. And I suppose that if Tyler hauled off and punched Heather, it would be a very unhappy household. But if you took him out to the end of uh, the street, Getting to beat him on the stone, Heather would be out there now. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let's don't do this. But see, we have an opportunity of grace that they didn't have. But still, the second death waits if people don't repent. Now then, He that steals a man that sells him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Now, to some extent, the law tolerated slavery, but it didn't tolerate going out and stealing somebody and selling him. Now, I think this Rex room, in my opinion, was they had to be especially good to the Hebrew or the Israelite people. He that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Ain't you glad you live under the grace plan? Ain't you glad you, your child does this? And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't want you to kill him. Let, 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 let's see if he'll straighten up. Grace plan gives us a chance to straighten up. He gives us a chance to pray. Now, this is the price day that Christ paid that we would have this. He went to the cross. They, I don't know. I've heard preachers say this medically is supposed to be one of the most agonizing death there is. Hang in there, your muscles give out. Perfect is this on the joints and joints begins to separate. Your chest gets better. And you gradually die from suffocation because your body just collapses on its set. Now that was what I heard the preacher preach one time. It sounds illogical to me, but it would be an awful agonizing death. I remember one time I got sick in the hospital. Now I realize they over they overdosed me with drugs. I was hallucinating. I saw somebody riding into the room on a horse and all sorts of silly things like that. But they had an IV in my arm. I tore their IV out. 
and I wanted to go to the restroom. So I said, yeah, went to the restroom, come back. The doctor come in, they thought that was a little unusual, so they tied my arm down. That's what I'm getting to. I didn't have no idea how bad that would hurt after about a day of you know, my arm in this one, just this one position. I can't imagine what it would mean hanging on the cross. I can't comprehend it. But Jesus died. The law showed us our need of him. Now then, he that curse his father and mother shall surely be put to death. If, a, if men strive together, one smite another with a stone or his fist and he die, not by keeping his bed. If he rise again and walk or brought upon the step, then the house this morning shall be quit. All he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. In other words, the penalty was according to the crime. If you smote a man and you put him in the bed for six months, you had to pay his wages for six months. And you had to pay for his damages. To some extent, our laws in America used to be based in general terms upon biblical laws. Yes, amen. And in as much as they did, it brought prosperity to our country. Walking upright brings prosperity. You know, they want to work next to Mexicans. They work. You, they work just like you can. But you go down to the Mexican border, you take five miles over to Mexico, it's a different world. It's the morality of the people. Wherever you go, the morality sets the stage for what things are. Now then, and if a man smite his servant or is made with a rod, he shall, and he die under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he has his money. Now this is something I'll, I'll admit, I just don't hardly understand. If a man beats his servant and he lives, well, it belongs to him. But here's the thing about it is, God is trying to teach him all. If he servant died, well, you lost your money. You got to use a little common sense here. Notwithstanding the condemnation of a day or two, he shall not be punished, nor for he is his money. And if men strive, and hurting one with one child, so that her fruit depart from her, yet no less chivas father, he shall surely be punished according to the woman's husband lay upon him, and shall pay as the judges determine. If you caused a woman to have a miscarriage, you had her husband had the, the right to make demands upon you, and the judges had the right to determine what the penalty should be. Of course, today you just go down and sign a paper to, and get rid of the unborn child with no consequences. It's better to have consequences here than it's just We will pay penalties in our society for the way we live. Now then, and if any miss cheap, Oh, then thou shalt give life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Fight with a man, knock his tooth out, they took you and knock your tooth out. You knock his eye out, they took you and put your eye out. Aren't you glad we are in the grace plan? Aren't you glad? You see, you and I have such a precious opportunity, theoretically, to be at home as well as here. If we, after we get saved, we do find ourselves <coughs> guilty of sin, rather than going out and having our backs striped with a black snake quilt, 
we can come in an altar. Say, Lord, I realize I've been wrong. Please forgive me. And John wrote it like this. He said, little children write unto you that you sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate. That's like a lawyer of faith. With the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Who is the situation? Not for our sins only, but not for the sins of the whole world. So, if we as a Christian <coughs> find that we have done sin, then Jesus' sacrifice at Calvary is for us, just like it was the center person who had never been saved. Now, if a man is not the eye of his servant, or the eye of his maid, and he that he perish, you shall let him go free for his eye's sake. In other words, if you had a servant, that would be an expensive item. If you were so brutal that you knocked his eye out, then you had to give him his freedom. Cost you a lot of money. The law began to teach them there was consequences to their actions. If you done wrong, there was a penalty to pay. Now we have hope in Christ. But if at the end there hasn't been forgiveness, the lake of fire still awaits, which is the second death. Nobody gets away with the sin. It's just soon now under the grace plan, we have an opportunity to repent. If an ox bore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. In other words, if it's an accidental thing, and the ox gores a man, is born, he dies, well, animal was to be killed. But the owner was to be found innocent. Except but if the ox was wont to crush his horns in the time past, and hath been testified to his master, uh, but you can prove he's been made to know it. Again we have you're responsible for your actions. You're responsible for not taking action you should take. In the New Testament, he that knows to do good, he does it not. To him, it is sin. And he hath not kept him in, but he hath killed a man and woman. The ox shall be stoned. And his owner also shall be put to death. If he had an oxen, he kills a man, it's totally accident, unexpected. He loses his oxen. That's an expensive item. But he don't suffer no personal punishment. But if he disregards the safety of his fellow man, and this ox kills somebody, he can be held responsible. Our laws, to some extent, still have a passive kinship to the if you got a vicious pit bull and people know this is your dog and you've been they've been told you've been told it's dangerous, he kills somebody, they can send you to prison and stay in Michigan for quite a long time. And truthfully, you got a pit bull and bite somebody, you always go to jail. German Shepherd. If you got a little video, uh, a little bitty food, people said they might or just pushed it on out of the way. See, the danger element becomes to be a part of the owner's responsibility. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give it for the ransom of his life, whatsoever is laid on him. Now, if the court decided 
to permit him to purchase his life with the money that it could be done. Whether he hath thwarted his son or hath thwarted his daughter, according to the judgment shall be done unto him. If if the ox shall push the manservant or maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. Now, if he kills a slave, he would pay the slave price to the owner, and the ox would be stoned. Some say that's the price that the religious leaders paid Judas with the betrayal of Christ. I believe that he was at 30 pieces of silver. Some say that was the amount it actually was. I don't know. It's a good thought. If a man open a pit, or a man shall dig a pit and not cover it, and an ox or an ass shall fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. See now, all this is, there is a responsibility for your action. There's a penalty if you do wrong. What we have is a wonderful opportunity to make things right before we have to pay the penalty. Now then, and if a man's ox hurt another one, that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money and dead ox also they shall divide. Again, you've got an ox, you're responsible for his actions. If he goes down here and he kills the other man's ox, he's just not oh well, that's right. You take the dead one and you divide it, you sell the live one and you divide the money. Or if it be known that the ox has been used to push in time past and his owner shall not keep him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. You replace the living ox, and you get the dead one if it's been known that you neglected to do your duty. Again, these laws seem to me kind of like harsh. Uh, but if you don't do what you know to do, there is consequences. Now, you know, a little guy like Jacob, he get around the car, he's watching him. You keep him out of the car because in his state of innocence, he's subject to make a mistake that won't keep you far from burning him. But me and you, adulthood, we know better than to stick our finger in the car. So, our responsibility we're supposed to grow up. We're supposed to do that and spiritually too. Because when you get saved, now I'm in the, when I got saved, I told I was pretty worse. But I realized after all these years how little I really know. You know. So but these laws were for our benefit. They were set aside. Now, through Jesus Christ, you and I have got a form of deliverance that they did not possess. Now, even though we don't intend it, if we do something wrong, we can pay a consequence for it. But they, there's a lot of things that you and I can prevent happening if we just live a holy, clean life, live the best we can. In um, the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 12. <clears throat> Let not sin therefore reign in your body mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye, ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness under sin, but yield yourselves unto God as through those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. 
No, I hear that. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we're not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Amen. Know ye not that whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are. You are to whom you obey, for the sin and the death are obedience unto righteousness. When you and I deliberately get ourselves over to sin, they have to be God and faith in Christ. That would be for In the 22nd chapter, we begin of Exodus, we begin to get into more of this. What you do has consequences. Time and time again. The Lord is telling them how they are to treat each other properly. But you know what you and I have got? We've got the grace of God. You know what Jesus told the Lord? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, thy strength. And thy neighbor as thy sin. All the law hangs on this. And if you love God like that, if you love your neighbor like that, you will find yourself walking in the paths of righteousness and treating the other by it. The other fellow, as you'd like to be treated. If we obey these rules of God. See, and here is talk. If you do this, you shouldn't do it, but if you do it, this is the consequence. This is the consequence. This is the consequence. The people who don't take advantage of the grace of God, there's a consequence. It's called the way of fire, which is the second death. Now then, if a man shall steal ox or sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. I wonder if our laws in America reflected a little more of that if we would find Actually, a little less crime. If somebody went to store and robbed it, if they had to actually make restitution five times for what they got, besides the penalties for law, I wonder if they wouldn't be less robbers. That's my own personal opinion. But here they said that they steal it, and if a thief be found breaking it, Break it up and be smitten that he die. Thou shalt not be no bloodshed for him. Under the law, they had a right to protect that that was thirst. Truth, our laws have gotten a little out of line. If a man comes in your house with a crowbar and begins to break your radio, your television, your piano, and you shoot him, they'll probably send you to prison. Your only hope is you could convince a jury that he intended to take a crowbar and hit you with it. As long as you have to be he can do whatever he wants to, what you've got, call the police. But here, he had to pay a penalty. If the homeowner caught him breaking in his home, turned the place up, and he killed him, he was, as it was stated down home, he was paid for. If a thief, if a man, if the sun be risen upon him, there shall be bloodshed for him, for he shall make full restitution. If he had nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. In other words, he's going to pay a penalty. Now, Somebody just come by and stole a walk out of the yard here, you don't have a right to kill him. 
But in, under the law, if you found him breaking in your home, especially at night, he, come, he comes busting in your house, you had a right of self-defense. I remember some years ago, this lady in Detroit, I guess for her it's fortunate that she was black. She called the police. Somebody's breaking in my basement. The police didn't even show up. She called the police. They're trying to get into the door coming up out of the basement. The police never showed up. The man busted the door down to come inside the house and she shot him and killed him. And the prosecuting attorney attempted to send her to prison. But this was such an open and shut case, the jury kind of gagged at the prosecuting attorney and refused to go along with him. See, our laws are kind of getting shaded the wrong way. Now, I don't believe the murder. But I think it is awful when a society would require a mother to allow a maniac, and she has rights to assume if he's busting her door down, he's a maniac, come in her house, and all she can do is stand there and watch him murder her children and call 911. put in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard shall be he make restitution if you just turn your cow loose over his field and she ate his grass you have to make restitution again the law time and time and Time and time again, it is showing the people it is wrong to sin. It's wrong to take advantage of the other person to cause them harm. There is a consequence for this. Now, we're not under the law, but we're under grace. But does that give us a right to take advantage of the other man? Paul says, God forbid. We should not let mistake grace for permission to sin. Let me go get my phone. Yeah. 
Okay, what's your number? Seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, one. I have to hire the 